here we are <laughs> reading to you a story from the Used Companion magazine of 123 years ago. And this story is called Gone. That's all there is to the title. Gone. And it'll be read to you by Jennifer. Seth Smith was a tall, slender lad, son of the widow Smith who did the washing for any strangers that might stop at the village hotel. Ten minutes earlier on the pleasant morning, Seth went down the street, whooping and calling to people whom he knew, but no one turned to listen or answer him. Now he is quite still and silent, but the passengers by gathered him awestruck. His eyes were closed and his lips were white, but it was the same hungry poor boy whom they had always known. There were the worn patched clothes, the bare feet, frostbitten and bleeding. The innkeeper's wife, a stout old woman, suddenly stooped and covered them tenderly. I might often have given him old shoes easily enough, she said to herself, turning away. He was a willing, kind boy, said another woman. He worked hard for his mother, many's the time, too. He brought my little Peter safe home. She remembered that she had often thought of giving him some decent clothes, but had put it off. The village teacher passed on his way from school and stopped where Seth lay on the porch of the inn. Who is it, Seth? he said, peering down at the quiet boy's face. It was a full of accusations against him. His heart seemed to stand still for a moment. He had noticed for years that this boy was quick-witted and eager to learn, but he worked all day and could not come to school. The master, in a vague way, had attended some time to give him his lessons at night to make a man out of him. He never had done it. He never would do it now. So he thought as he walked home with a heavy sickness at heart, the young minister came hurrying down the street. He too stopped. Seth, he said, the widow Smith's boy. The minister was always a busy man with all of his flock to look after. He had noticed this lad on, only as a merry fellow who never came to church probably for lack of decent clothes and a little kindly encouragement. He had meant to speak to him as he met him, to tell him of the one friend who is better than all others and to give the lad a word of kindness and of help. He had not done it. A great horror seized on the young man as he stood looking down at the boy's pale face. Did he know of Jesus? Where was he now? Whatever Seth had gone, these old friends who had known and neglected him so long could not follow. Whatever his need, they could not call to him, nor touch him, nor help him. They were the same. The same sunshine fell upon the dusty village street along which he ran noisily a minute ago. In an instant he had passed out of their reach forever. There is not a friend, nor a servant, nor an acquaintance whom we neglect today who some time may not turn to us Seth's white accusing face. The pale lips will be silent, but a voice will speak for them. Some of the words of the master will make themselves felt, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Wow. Okay. That was kind of sad. Bit of a sad story there. Poor oh boy. All right, stay tuned and we'll bring you some more of the Used Companion magazine of 123 years ago. So be sure to sub me and we'll bring you some more. Bye-bye now.